Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, Celebration uh, Church. Uh, it's, it's, un, it's, it's unbelievable, but here we are at the end of summer. We are at the uh, final long weekend of, of, the, uh, of the summer, and I hope everyone is having a, a great time, enjoying the wonderful weather, and it's just getting so cool over the next last few days, but uh, at least there hasn't been as many bugs. And, uh, and it really, we had a really great summer. We had so many events and well, not a lot, but we had our outdoor service and, and uh, everyone's still been attending. And it's, it is, even though a lot of us are busy and away. So just welcome everyone. And thank you very much for, uh, for here on this special Sunday where we're going to, uh, Pastor James is going to be preaching on a, on a sermon that is very, uh, very relevant. And uh, certainly um, well, was something we've all felt about uh, the difficulties in life and how to get, get through it. And uh, if there's any new people, please, uh, you're welcome. And, and you're welcome to, uh, to uh, reach out to anyone here. David Mark is uh, one of the greeters, and uh, as I am as well. So if you have any questions, by all means, you can just send us a, a quick note. And um, Paul has a special announcement today, among others, of, uh, about the men's group. We have a special event coming up. And if there's any prayer requests at all, please uh, just send them over to, uh, to Judy Song and uh, she'll remember to, uh, to pray for that. So I'm gonna hand it over now to the, uh, the, the call to worship. Okay, good morning. Uh, we'll do call to worship today. So when we go through the uh, switch of verse, I'll read the one that's title one. And if everyone else can just follow along and read the, uh, when it says all, you can read, follow along, read that as well. And then we'll go into responsive reading. Similarly, uh, I'll read the one and everyone else can read the off. Verse one. A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches. And favor is better than silver or gold. The rich and the poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. Whoever sows injustice will reap calamity and the rod of his fury will fail. Whoever has a bountiful eye will be blessed, blessed, for he shares his bread with the poor. Do not rob the poor because he is poor, or crush the afflicted at the gate. For the Lord will plead their cause and rob of life those who rob them. So put your confidence in God. Those who have God as their helper will rejoice. God gives justice to the oppressed and the food to the hungry. God frees the prisoners and opens the eyes of the blind. So put your trust in God's goodness. Let God's reign endure forever. Let us worship God. Let's please bow, uh, bow for the prayer of adoration. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you all the glory because you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You are gracious and merciful. Your love for us is so great that you sent your only son, Jesus, to die for our sins. And you're always ready to, for to forgive your children when they sin against you. This is the greatest act of love you have shown us as our loving father. We lift up our hearts to you in love and adoration, and we praise you for all your greatness, and we are filled with awe when we think about all the great things you have done for us. Your word gives us life, and it lights our path as we go through life. Father, we offer our lives and our service to you as we come to worship you in your glorious splendor, and we do this with a grateful heart, and we praise you because you are faithful and true. For these things we pray in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, then. 
is nothing better than you. There is nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. and flaws, Lord, you see them all, and you still call me friend, as the God of the mountain, as the God of the valley, there's not a place, your mercy and grace won't find me again, oh, there's nothing Thank you, Danny. Thank you, Danny, for that wonderful song this morning. Let's, let us pray. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned. We have sinned against you in thought, in our words, in our deeds, and by what we have done and but what, by what we have left also undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. And so, Lord, we confess and we repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. And we ask for your mercy that you would forgive us. That instead today, that we would turn from our dark ways, that we would turn from our sin. Not merely that we would ask for forgiveness to turn back to our old ways, but instead, Lord, that we would delight in your will and walk instead in your ways. Lord, Father, thank you that even while we were still sinners, you died on that cross for us. And even knowing today that 
even in our hypocrisy, even in our sin, you have chosen to give yourself for us. And so, Lord, we thank you for your grace, your grace that overflows. And so, Lord, may we also catch that heart in which you already have for us. That, Lord, we would love our neighbors even while they are also still sinning against us. Lord, Father, that we would still love, that we will love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Help us, O oh Lord, that we may reflect your son, Jesus Christ, in our lives, that we may become more and more in your image. And Lord, that we would love as you loved each and one of us, O oh Lord. We thank you for your grace that is always abundant, that is always faithful, and always true. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. James 1, 2 to 18, ESV. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Let the lowly brother boast in his exaltation and the rich in his humiliation, because like a flower of the grass, he will pass away. For the sun rises with its scorching heat and withers the grass. Its flower fail, falls and its beauty perishes. So also will the rich man fade away in the midst of his pursuits. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Rebecca, for the reading this morning. Let us pray as we, as we open his word together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. May you speak to us if there's any confusion in our hearts. Lord, Father, that there may be clarity. If there's any chains that bind us down, Lord, that you may break those chains today, that we may be free to walk in your truth and in your kingdom. Lord, if we come here with hurting and pain, difficulty and troubles, Lord, we pray for your healing, for your anointing, for your presence to comfort, but also to convict and move us as you desire to move us here. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. This morning, uh, the, the sermon's title is When Everything Sucks, Facing Our Trials in Life. You know, uh, you probably wonder, Pastor James, is that, a, is, is that a good word to use for a sermon? Uh, just just hold on for a second and, and, and you'll see why and where I was <laughs> inspired to use that particular word, sucks. But 
You know, I, here's a question that I have for you. Um, what is, you know, I've asked this question in a past sermon in, for our church in the past before, but what is joy? What is the difference between joy and happiness? What is the difference between joy and happiness? Happiness is an a emotion, a, a feeling, a, a good feeling um, of either excitement or gladness. That you can feel happy in one moment because you feel pleasure in that moment. But happiness is fleeting. It can easily uh, go away at the, at the snap of a finger. It's circumstantial. Uh, depending on your circumstances, it can, it can go away quite easily. And so if, as soon as there's a different turn of events, our happiness can go away. Happiness is temporary. It's fleeting. But joy, uh, rather, you know, when we look at the uh, Greek definition of joy, uh, joy is more of a state of being than an emotion. A result of choice. It's a choice that we make. It's one of the fruits of the Spirit, according to Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23. Uh, and having joy is part of the experience of being a Christian. Okay? So joy is more than a state of emotion. It's the result of a choice that we make. It's a choice that we make in our lives. We can choose to have joy, to be glad, to be thankful, to rejoice in those moments. To praise the Lord, to praise God. So joy is, is a choice in some ways. But there are circumstances in our lives that we come across that just suck that joy. And you've heard that phrase. It sucks the joy out of life, right? Now, uh, when I think uh, that word suck, I think about uh, this vacuum cleaner that... Uh, <laughs> No, for the it's on the side. <laughs> this vacuum cleaner that I bought, uh, you know, uh, when I was back in Montreal, I had moved to the city for a very first time, and and uh, and I didn't really have much in my possession. So when I got to my uh, apartment, uh, I, was, I had a broom and pan, and I was using that, but it just didn't get all of the dust everywhere. And so, I thought, okay, today I'm gonna go out and get myself a vacuum cleaner. So I looked in the flyers. And as I was looking in the flyers, I saw a Canadian Tire. They had this, uh, they had this Dirt Devil vacuum uh, for, I think it was something around sixty dollars. And I thought, that's not bad. I could afford that. And so I went out to Canadian Tire, bought this. The you know, it, it was the cheapest vacuum that was uh, in their inventory. You know, it. I and not only the price was a, it was supposed to be fifty nine ninety nine. Uh, it was open box, and I bought it for thirty nine ninety nine. So I thought I walked out of that store thinking I was the luckiest guy on the planet, and I thought I got a steal today, right? Uh, open box special. I brought it home. Uh, to say the least, it was uh, it sucked. <laughs> so you know, if if I have to say it sucked, it's, it's not because the vacuum, you know, is sucking my the dust around the house but because it didn't in fact it did everything else that a vacuum should do it should make all the noise you know blow air out of out of the exhaust but it didn't do anything really for, for my cleaning experience in fact at one point i was uh, i was vacuuming and then you know you'd see dust particles coming out of the other side of the vacuum and then i realized there's a reason why this was an open box special. Nobody wanted this. There are some things that should clean up your life. It should suck all of the dirt and, and, uh, and problems out of your life, but end up causing more of those issues in our lives instead. There are times we try so hard to deal or solve our problems our way and ends up sucking the life out of us instead. 
And there are circumstances and situations in life where the quality of our life is at detriment because maybe of our circumstances or because we don't have a solution to our problems and our troubles. But here's what the scripture tells us today. You know, when we look at the scripture, it tells us the first thing is to count it all as joy. It says, count it all as joy. How do you count something all as joy? Now, it doesn't mean that we are unaffected by our circumstances. It doesn't mean that we don't feel angry or, con- or, or frustrated. But we can choose not to let the best of ourselves be consumed by how we feel or how our circumstances feel. Now, don't get me wrong. There are times that we just feel lousy. We really do. We just feel lousy. But the difference between allowing the lousiness of our lives and and feeling that difficulty and pain and struggle become the best of what we are or what we've meant to be. We can still make a choice in the midst of all of the dirt and all the grime in our lives. We can still make a choice to be thankful. You know, I, my, our, our, our family dog, so my, my, my mother's dog, technically, uh, you know, they, when she first brought him home and, uh, and uh, when we were, you know, our family was so excited. And I remember taking this dog out, uh, you know, when he got a little bit older and there was a dog park and there was all these other dogs and puppies around. And, 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 and so it was a off leash, uh, it was an off leash uh, park. And so we, we took the leash off of him and then we just saw his name Sammy and he just ran across the uh, the field and and he came back and I thought to myself, why is he he's he's got a white coat he came back and he's just he came back and he's just all brown I thought okay maybe he went in the mud and rolled around in the mud and came up and he started licking me on the face he was happy to see me and I thought you smell you're just you're you smell nasty what is this smell that I'm smelling? And I realized that he had, you know, another dog's, you know, feces all over him. But he was the happiest dog. We were wondering, what is wrong with this dog? Why is he, why did he go roll around in some other dog's poop? And so upon Googling this experience was that, okay, why is he, why is he doing this? And apparently, uh, in order for him to be attractive to the opposite sex, he tries to cover himself in, in, it's almost like wearing perfume for a dog, apparently. He's trying to attract other dogs and be popular amongst the mixed. You might have found maybe the manure of another larger dog or a more uh, attractive dog and probably spread it on himself and to attract a mate. And I thought to myself, that doesn't seem right. That, that, that doesn't sound like what humans would do. But he was happy. It seemed he was pretty happy to be at that park that day. And so I thought, I thought to myself, you know, I was thinking about that. Can you be happy? Can you be joyful? Can you have joy even when your life feels exactly that way? When you're covered in dirt, when you're down in the dust, when the worst is at, you know, at its peak in our lives, can we still have joy? It's a question I had to ask myself. When talking about this today, there are times that are so difficult and so difficult that we can't even be thankful. 
And we may come across circumstances that way. We try to count our blessings, but sometimes life could be just so bad that we can't count our blessings. You know, I hear that quite you know, kind of frivolously sometimes by many Christians and Christians often say, you know, oh, well, you know, you still got to be joyful. And even when you go through difficult times and I, and I thought to myself, there are times that's, that's very difficult to do. And I hear that all the time, count your blessings. But here's the thing, the scripture doesn't tell us to count our blessings. It says, count it all as joy. Count it all as joy. I want you to just say that to yourself for a moment today. Count it all as joy. What does that even mean? See, some of us come here today and we're waist deep in troubles. Some of us even neck deep in troubles. And there doesn't seem to be anything you do to make you feel better but counting all those experiences as joy is not necessarily you feeling better and that and that's part of our culture today you, we want to feel good the feel good culture we want to feel good today if we feel good i must be happy and if i'm happy right now then maybe i'll have joy but that's not entirely true, is it? We've tried so much to be happy. But to all our devices, we've found that nothing that makes us really happy in that moment has brought us full joy. And so how do we count it all as joy? We have to count it all as joy. So when we look at our circumstances and we have to say to that circumstance or situation or the experience in life and ask ourselves, will I allow this to consume me and to be what governs my life today? Or is something bigger than this in my life that is so significant that none of this matters? It becomes dwarfed in comparison and we need something that like that in our lives. And in order to, for us to begin to count that all as joy, there needs to be something that covers all of that and dwarfs all of that experience in essence in order for us to count it all as joy, don't we? The solution to our greatest miseries in life is only in what never dies. What never fails is always and perpetually and completely and entirely perfect, isn't it? In the worst of our circumstances, the only thing that would possibly give us joy is that. Something that is totally unfailing, that is perpetually good, perpetually perfect. And if we find that perfection, it is only in that that will ultimately bring us that joy, isn't it? Some of us come from very different circumstances, right? We've got it all. We're content. Maybe we have enough blessings in our life that we can count our blessings. We're in a prosperous situation enough that we can count our blessings it's all about the things that we've earned though but my question is do you have joy and is that joy everlasting whether you come here today searching for faith curious or maybe you've already you're, you're already someone who has been coming to church for years. The truth is this. Your joy can only come from one thing. To know true love. 
and to be loved by someone who will never fail you, whose will is greater than my own. I remember as a as a kid uh, growing up, you know, like many uh, first generation immigrant homes. Uh, I remember there were times that my my parents had a very very difficult time financially. Our family had a very difficult time financially, and as I've I've mentioned this in the past with our congregation many times, but there have been times where we did we barely had any food in the fridge. Uh, you know, there would be, you know, the, the soles on my shoe would be would be broken off and we'd take crazy glue and we'd be, you know, crazy gluing the, the soles on back onto our runners uh, to go back to school. Uh, you know, it, it was, it, it was tough times. But I remember the only thing that really mattered at the end of the day, when my parents got home, and we sat around together. It didn't matter what we were eating. You know, it could have been, you know, it, it could have been frozen pot pies, right? It could have been anything. Whatever we were eating, it didn't matter. We would sit around that table and we were just glad to be with each other. There was a happiness and there was also peace and joy to have one another as a family. And I remember that very sentimentally. In essence, for many of us, there can be very difficult times in our lives. And we always get a sense that we can't survive through all these troubles that we have unless we have someone with us who will walk with us and who will always be faithful through those ups and downs. The bad news for some of us today is that faith is really not about what we want answered now, though. Right now. This very moment with all the instant results. Instead, no. The good news or the news that we would need in our lives is to know that there is someone who will walk alongside you in all those troubles until we get through it. God could answer all the prayers for you right now, then and there. But he's not someone who exists to cater to our needs. That's not the premise of his existence. The premise of his existence is not so that he could quickly answer our needs and then have us quickly desert him when things feel good and then come back to him when we aren't feeling so good. The truth is that God desires to have a relationship with you. And he desires to reveal himself, not temporarily to you, but eternally to you. Not circumstantially but internally. God wants to be in your life, not to give you temporary happiness, but eternal joy. See, the fact is that the gods in which the world often seeks only for their needs and are not really worshiping God. They're not really seeking God. They're merely beckoning or calling on slaves slaves to work for their own benefit in that very moment but the deception is this you can receive all those benefits from gods that will give you a a whatever solution in that very moment but there is nothing eternal about what they give you there's nothing eternal about that relationship in fact it is always conditional there is no joy there there are plenty of temporary solutions but never an everlasting joy and never an everlasting 
relationship. We don't need a God that will fit our limited way of living and of thinking. We need a God who is all-knowing, all-powerful, all-present, and perfect in every way. And it is only in him and him alone, in God alone, that we will find our joy. The second, after counting it all as joy, is this, that faith produces steadfastness. See, here's the thing, none of our trials or none of our problems are in vain. There is that phrase, what doesn't kill you will only make you stronger, right? You know, when when I was for many of us, a lot of us growing up, some of us have learned how to ride a bike. The first several times you may fall, but we learn to be steady on our bike. But there's a difference between someone who learns how to ride their bike on just smooth cement and those who decide to go off the, off the road and, and into, onto different terrain. Learning to ride a bicycle doesn't mean that the roads get less difficult ahead, less challenging. But as we experience, as we gain experience in riding that bicycle, the terrain will always change, but you will become a lot more steady. There's someone, something about someone who learns to de- depend on God and to seek God continuously as we grow in our faith there is also a steadfastness that grows there's a story in the bible where jesus is found sleeping on a boat in the middle of a storm in fact in the book of mark it says a furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion, and the disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up. He rebuked the the wind and and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. How do we deal with our troubles? Are we frantic and live impulsively? Or do we start calculating our outcomes? There are no plans that are fail-proof, right? There are always anomalies that can come our way that we never suspected or that we've never prepared for. We are always, as human beings, fallible to error. See, when we learn to put our faith, put our trust in God, God gives us that steadiness. He gives us that peace. And he's, in some ways, I think for some of us gathering here today, whatever circumstance you're in, it may seem rocky. It may seem the waves are just so terrifying. There's no way to overcome them. First is to Count it all as joy, because now it's opportune time to know who God is. And the second, that as we learn to lean on him and trust in him and come to him, God will also produce steadfastness in your life as you do. 
And so it brings me to the last quick point. The first point went a lot longer than the other two. The last is that trust that the Lord's will is always perfect for you. His will is always perfect. So trust that he will always carry you through his perfect will. Allows perfect will to also be perfected in you. And see, that's, that's, where, that's, where, that's where a lot of us have a misconception of God's will. We think, okay, is this God's will? All these troubles and all the things in front of me, the scripture even tells us, as we look at James, God doesn't bring temptation on our lives. No, he doesn't do that. That's just not who God is. But the trials that happen in our lives often are perpetuated and are probably exasperated by our desire. And so when we learn to lay our desires down before God and instead trust in him, there's a twofold thing. There's... One thing that we have to trust in God's perfect will, but the second is that we have to be willing for God to perfect his will in our lives as well. Let me say that again. There is one thing to trust that God's will is perfect, but what is required of us is that we allow God to perfect his will also in ours. There are times we face temptation where we feel down on ourselves. To look at yourself with eyes of contempt and discouragement. And in turn, this is often our response. We feel discouraged. We feel contempt in our hearts. And so our human response, our instinctual response is, well, I'm going to do something about it. And I'm not saying we shouldn't do something about our troubles in our lives. But when that do something becomes our desire and ambition, our revenge, our bitterness, our agenda, That's where we find ourselves fallible to error. And so we have to trust the Lord's will is perfect, but we also have to trust the Lord enough that he will perfect his will in ours as well. We are not perfect, but God certainly is. And to have him in our lives means we are perfectly we're being perfected in our contentment. We are being perfected even in our troubles. And so count it all as joy. Count it all as joy when you are facing the most difficult things in your life because nothing is in vain. Count it all as joy because God is working out his perfection in you when you trust in him. Because faith will produce that steadfastness in your life. Have hope in him today because the promises that he has for us are assured of us not only for tomorrow, but for eternity. While the earth promises us solutions for maybe tomorrow that are maybe a 12-month contract, maybe a two-year contract, maybe five-year warranty, or whatever this world has to offer you, God offers you eternity. And so don't find your joy in the things of this earth and in the solutions that this earth has to offer you, but seek God, because his salvation, his love for you is not temporary. His faithfulness is not temporary. 
It is eternal. Even after death, that death would not take hold of you. That even if you should die, you will have joy. Even to death, you will have joy. And I'm not sure about you folks, but I sure want that joy in my life. I want a joy that will carry me even when I die. I want a hope and a desire for hope that is beyond what this life has to offer. I want to know that when I die today, if I die today, that I will be with God tomorrow. That is joy. That is joy that supersedes and transcends this life. That is joy. And so will you find joy in Christ whenever you face trials? Put your trust in him and know that he will carry you through. He is not conditional in carrying you through. He's not going to say, well, pay up. Here's your, here's your due. In fact, let me tell you something. While this world has said to you, in order for you to gain safe passage, you have to pay up. Here is your condition. God says to you, I've already paid that debt. Whatever sins you feel like you need to pay for, I've paid for that on the cross. I will not leave you the same as you were before, but I will work in you. I will work my perfection out in you. And through all your troubles, through all your difficulties, through all your hardship, I will be there to walk with you. I will be there whenever you face trials. I'll walk with you through those trials and you will have joy. So find your joy in Christ whenever you face trials. Put your trust in him and know that he will carry you through in his perfect an awesome will in this perfect timing. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you because, Lord, your will is perfect in every way. We can attest to that when we've gone against your will. We've gone our own way. And every time that we've gone our own way, it may have worked out to our benefit, but maybe to someone else's detriment. It may have worked out for someone else's benefit, but maybe to our own detriment. So Lord, we know your perfection is true. There are no plans that we make that are failed proof. And so, Lord Father, today we lean on you. And through our troubles, through our difficulties in life, we trust that your will is perfect. We trust that your will is always good. That even in the moment, it doesn't seem that way. It seems unfair. It seems difficult to go on. We don't know why at times we have to forgive our neighbor. We don't know why we have to love our enemy. But Lord, we know your will is perfect. Give us the heart that you desire. Lead us to where you want us to go. Lord, there are some of us who come here today who don't have you in their lives who don't know you, maybe come here for the first time and have yet to confess your name. Lord, Father, may you bless those who come into your presence today 
and that they may know your joy and your presence. If there are anyone who has joined in this, in this call today, or maybe you'll be watching off of YouTube and listening in, if you would like the Lord to be in your life today, will you follow along with me in this prayer and pray with me? Dear Jesus, thank you that you paid a price that we couldn't pay on that cross. Lord, I want to trust in you today. And so here I am, broken, in need of your love. Would you lead me? Would you guide me? And would you take my life to be for your name? I want to enter into your kingdom to live with you and walk with you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. This morning, uh, if, if you are new today, thank you for joining us today. I hope that message today spoke to some of you that are going through difficult times. Uh, if there is any uh, need for uh, prayer or if you'd like to receive counseling in any way, um, please do feel free to contact me. Um, if you go on our church website, celebrationpc.com, uh, you can find my contact there, and uh, you can uh, you can easily contact me by email or by phone uh, there, and I'd be willing to take your call at any time. So please feel free uh, to call if you are going through some difficult times and you'd like prayer, or if you'd like to hear more about the gospel today. And so uh, at this time... Uh, there will be a time of, uh, of taking of the offering, but if you are new today, or even if you're a member, it doesn't matter. Um, you are not obligated to give in any way, but um, all of whatever is given today, it will be given uh, for the sake of, you know, not anybody's profit, but it is so that we can do good ministry and to be a blessing to the communities around us. We do a lot of outreach and a lot of things with that uh, for the sake of uh, blessing others. And so would you please give if, you, if that is in your heart, but if not, uh, you are not obligated in any way. But we're just going to pray for these gifts today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you uh, for these gifts that you have given us so that we may give to you in return. That every... Uh, every ounce of blessing you have given us is for stewardship to be a blessing to our neighbors and to our friends, especially those who are going through most difficulties. Lord, may we not be uh, greedy. Uh, may we not be um, self-centered uh, in the resources that you have given us to live, but instead, Lord, that we would be generous, that we would be loving. As a church, that we continue to practice that grace and that love, and that together as the family of Christ, that we may continue to do good works in the communities around us to those who are struggling. And we see these, as we talk about today, these troubles and these trials, there are many who are going through these troubles and trials that we can, uh, we may uh, not know about or are that are very close to us. And so Lord, help us to be a blessing as a church as we come together and put together these resources for the sake of your kingdom. And so, Lord, may it be put to wise and godly and gracious use for the sake of your name and your glory and your love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Uh, I'm just going to pass the time uh, to our sister Judy, who will uh, lead us in some more prayer. Hey, good morning, everyone. Let's pray. Father God, you are our refuge, our strength, our ever-present help in trouble. Because you are almighty God and our fortress, Lord, we will not fear, even though the earth give way. 
We thank you that you're always near to us, Lord, and through faith in Jesus that we have the forgiveness of our sins and the hope of eternal life and even hope in this life too, Lord, because you're always with us. Father, now we want to just pray for Jean's mom, who's at the ER this morning. We pray that you would be with her and um, care for her. Um, that you would, um, we thank you that her uh, son is with her, who's a doctor, and just that he can um, uh, help her, Lord. We pray that um, the doctors will be able to diagnose her unexplained bruising, Lord, and um, that they would be able to do it properly. We pray that she would not be scared, Lord, that your presence would be with her even now, that she would feel your presence, Lord, comforting her and giving her peace. And Lord, we pray that you'd also be with the rest of her family, that they would not feel anxious or worried, Lord, and that, that they would be comforted to know that you're with her. We pray also, Lord, that um, uh, if once she's diagnosed, that she would be also be able to be treated at home in the comfort of her home and her, her family. So we lift her up to you. And Father, we also pray for Grace Kim as well. Uh, continue to pray for her health issues. Um, and um, just pray that you would help her and give her peace and that you would um, bring her back to uh, full health, Lord. Um, and we pray that you would uh, also enable her and the healthcare providers to find out what, what is actually the cause of her, um, her uh, situation, Lord and be able to treat it properly. We pray for Eric and Irene in Hong Kong and pray that you continue to be with them and their family as they go through challenges and difficulties. May, they can, may you encourage them, Lord, and just be with them and give them times of rest, Lord, from the things that they're facing. Um, and pray for their health issues, Lord, that you would enable the doctors to, to be able to treat them properly and to diagnose them properly, Lord. Um, so be with that family, Lord, and um, comfort them, Lord, and provide support for them where they are. Lord, we also um, pray, Lord, as school reopens, we pray for the new and returning students to universities, that you would be with them as they adjust to life back on campus and as things reopen, Lord, um, that you would protect them and watch over them and care for them, Lord. And for especially for the new students that are dealing with a new environment. And we pray that you would provide friends and a strong Christian community that would support them as they go through this first year. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to encourage them and help them to grow in their faith, even though they are not, they may not be um, at home and um, and that they are far from home, that you would um, that your presence would be with them and they would know that you are with them, Lord. And we pray also, Lord, for the parents that may be concerned and worried about their kids being far away. May you give them comfort and peace, Lord, at this time and in the year ahead, too, that they you would um, just enable them to trust in you, Lord, and to trust that you're taking care of their children. We pray, Lord, also for the elementary and high school students that are returning as well, that you would calm any anxiety that they may have, Lord, um, and uh that you would just also watch over them, whether they're returning online or in person, that you would give them your wisdom and your peace and your um, love, Lord, um, that they may know that whatever they go through this year, that you're also always with them. May they be able to turn to you, Lord, whenever they face challenges. May you also provide encouragement through a strong Christian community, through their friends, and, um, and just enable them to uh, be able to to really trust in you this year, Lord, as they go through it. And Lord, we also pray for um, our, our church, Lord, as we continue to, uh, that you would give wisdom for the search committee in the session um, in terms of uh, searching for a new pastor, Lord, as well. May you guide us and may you help us, Lord, um, in finding the person that you want us to have. And Lord, we also um Pray, Lord, for our missionaries, Lord, for Sam and Linda as they've returned to Central Asia. May you be with them as they adjust back to, to their assignment there and as they enter into a new ministry. May you enable them and give them wisdom, Lord, and lead them in the way they should go. We pray for young Doe, Lord, who's serving in Toronto, and pray, as things reopen, may you give him wisdom and enable him, Lord, and encourage him, Lord, in his, um, in his ministry here in Toronto. 
We pray for Robert and Maria as well, that you would guide them and give them direction, Lord, where you want them to go next. And Lord, as things reopen, Lord, we continue to pray, Lord, as there is a fourth wave that has come. And we pray for your protection over all of us and all of the people in Toronto and in Canada and worldwide, Lord, that um, that you would enable people to still um, be vigilant and not let their guard down, Lord that we would continue to follow the guidance of public health and the public health measures that have been um, promoted. And Lord, lastly, I just wanna pray for the situation in Afghanistan, Lord. Um, for the people there that are still stuck there and who have, are still wanting to get out and waiting to get out, may you protect them, Lord, as they wait uh, and that you would help them find a way out of the country for those who want to leave. And we pray for your protection over um, the governments the uh, allied governments in, in finding a way to help the people there. We pray, Lord, for the Taliban government, that you would give them compassion for the people that they now govern, that you would work in their hearts, Lord, and uh, to, um, to have compassion and mercy on the people there. And Lord, we lift up our, ourselves to you, Lord, as we've heard today, that you're always with us through our difficulties and trials, Lord, that you never leave us. We thank you. And we pray that you would remind us, Lord, of your presence this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.